Hello Unity fans and welcome back to my Hixmap game development series. At this point in the series we've got a decent link between our graphics, UI and gameplay mechanics. There's still a lot to be fleshed out, but the basics are working quite well. In today's video we're taking on a rather important and influential change in our overall functionality. It will impact building and feature placement, turn pathfinding on its head, provide more control over the internal workings of our hexes and totally revolutionize our unit movement. What we'll do is segmenting, segmenting our, our hexes. hexes. If it seems as if I've hyped this up a bit too much, keep watching and you'll soon realize how much it affects our game. It is true that we have actually started with this segmentation long ago. For example, each resource or feature have always been placed on one of seven internal locations on the hex, the center and the segments in the six directions. And our gatherers have been walking up to the correct internal location as well. However, this structure has not been built into the foundation of the game yet. For example, when we set tree density on a hex, only the density level 0 to 3 is saved. Each time the hex needs to be created or updated, we have only that density level as information. The fixed random number system in the background will always create the hex in exactly the same way for a given density level, as if we're just starting out. Everything that happens to those individual trees from that point onwards is lost when we save or load since we don't currently save any of the internal locations information. Actually, even if we just edit the surrounding hexes, this causes our original hex to be re-triangulated, placing all the trees in their original locations again. The hex is basically recreated and everything that has happened to it is forgotten and rolled back. This will not do. This will not do. As it stands, we also don't have a say about exactly which locations are populated, since the random numbers determine that given the density level. We control things only on a hex level. When we get to detailed map editing, we almost certainly will want the option of deciding on which specific location some objects should be placed. Finally, and probably the most important factor, is unit movement. Currently, a unit on a long path moves in steps from hex to hex. One step of the movement starts on one edge of the hex and travels to a different edge of the hex, either through the center or on a Bezier curve curving towards the center. Furthermore, the unit always passes through the center of the edge of the hex, no matter whether it intends to go left, straight on or right from there onwards. This is by design, since it means we can always find the path to walk on a hex by applying a Bezier curve through three anchor points, namely the center of the hex and the centers of two of the edges, depending on enter and exit direction. This means that whatever the path taken across the hex, the unit will always end that part of its journey through the hex in the center of the edge and, very importantly, looking straight ahead. This in turn means when walking across a hex, the direction from which you approached the entering edge and the direction you intend to take from the exiting edge does not play a role, since you ensure that you start and end your journey in the center looking straight ahead. It removes the technical dependence between steps of the path. It also ensures that you can let any journey across a hex take the exact amount of time to complete since you just force the unit to walk a bit slower when turning to make up for the slightly shorter distance. This makes it fairly easy to implement, but it also leads to some wide turns, since your previous step could not intuitively turn you more towards your intended next direction, to cut down on the angles of the Bezier curves. You may have also noticed that the woodcutter walks to the center of the edge, looking straight ahead, before turning while standing towards the selected tree, as if he didn't know beforehand which tree he would chop. It would look a lot more natural if he started turning towards the next direction he intends to go in as he neared the end of each step or hex. 
We can achieve this by moving away from hexes as our lowest level of control into segments of the hex as our lowest level of control. So instead of always using a Bezier curve with edge center edge control points as one independent step of our path with a fixed time to cross any hex, we can now let our path run from segment to segment instead. This allows the unit to find small paths through whatever features may be present on the hex. Note how he is now allowed to always keep turning towards the next direction, rather than forcing him into a standard direction at the end of each segment of path. Unlike the original method that completed movement through an entire hex in one unit of time, before moving on to the next decision, we now achieve this by starting off with our first three control points as before. But then things change. As soon as the unit has progressed far enough down the first part of the journey towards the second control point, we drop the first control point and add the next control point in the path queue to the set to form a new set of three control points, starting off where we abruptly ended the previous one. You can see the colored rays indicating the control points. We actually restart the Bezier curve at 0% at that switching point in time without letting it run through to 100%. However, there is one catch. If we restart the Bezier curve from scratch with three new control points, the unit will turn towards the second control point immediately, since the starting direction of the Bezier curve is always from the first to the second control point. You can see the stop-turn-start nature of the walk. Since we now allow freedom of starting and ending direction, we need to add something to cater for it by aligning them between segments. The solution is to add a dummy control point a certain distance in front of the unit at the time the switch happens. This is indicated by the green ray. This forces the starting direction to equal the previous ending direction, and the unit can then start to turn away gradually. This means we now need a 4 control point Bezier function and derivative function rather than the three control point versions. Luckily, that's only slightly more complicated and quite easy to implement. What's more complicated is how to handle all the possible neighbors to search through in the pathfinding, since a segment can now have neighboring segments on different hexes. And they're not all spaced equidistant like before with the hexes. All of these connections need to be tested for whether the unit should be allowed to take them and what the movement cost in the pathfinding should be. You would have noticed how the unit walked a bit slower or faster through certain segments. This is because the distances between control points are not fixed per path segment anymore like before. To account for this, I've scaled time through the Bezier curve using only a very crude approximation of the distance the Bezier curve would cover. I still need to add a more accurate version to remove this misalignment and keep it smooth. We'll take a look at the detail in a future video. You'd also need to think about what movement you'd allow or block, since it's possible for a unit to walk past obstacles on a segment if there's enough open space on the edges. The three directly adjacent segments and the center of the hex is straightforward. But you could also allow the unit to cross over hex corners or parts of other segments in special circumstances. This solution, while adding considerable complexity, provides the units with an enormous amount of additional freedom of movement which, going forward, will probably negate many potential pitfalls in unit movement that may have required tailor-made workarounds. Or is that walkarounds? For example, it already solves another existing issue, namely that units currently occupy the hex completely. This means other units cannot use it as a pathway or final destination. A unit standing in the center of the hex currently prevents all units from walking around him on that hex to get to the other side. For large units on small hexes, this may be okay, but in our situation it drastically restricts possible movement. And we will have situations in which we specifically want more than one unit on a hex at a time. For example, when they gather around the fire before tucking in for the night. Speaking of tucking in for the night, I think this is a good point to stop for now.
I've found pondering, planning, and partially implementing this considerable adjustment to the functionality extremely fascinating and can't wait to actually adjust the pathfinding algorithm to incorporate it as well. Please consider subscribing if you'd like to continue on this exciting journey with me. Goodbye.